What's up guys, welcome to Plot Twist. Every person on Pawn Stars has made their fair share of mistakes in the gold and silver pawn shop, but none of them have crashed and burned quite like Chum Lee has. He has become known throughout the show for messing up, losing the shop lots of money, and making an absolute fool of himself. While he has had his good moments on the show every now and again, his reputation is built upon all of his hilarious mistakes. All of his shenanigans on Pawn Stars have built him a massive following amongst the show's fans, and it seems his antics will never end. Today, we're going to be talking about Chum Lee, listing down some of his biggest slip-ups in the history of the show. Here are a few times where Chum Lee slipped up on Pawn Stars. Before we get started though, make sure to leave a comment down below. Who's your favorite member of the Harrison family or Pawn Stars cast? Also, don't forget to subscribe, that way you never miss a new video and enter in in our monthly shoutout giveaway. Number 5 one time, a guy walked into Gold and Silver with 50 Pez dispensers hoping to make a good profit from them. Corey and Chum Lee took the reins on this deal, and Chum Lee could not stop making fun of the guy in his massive collection. He started asking the guy if they had any candy for them, and when he said no, Chum Lee asked him what good they were without candy. The guy did not take a liking to this whatsoever, and Chum Lee only made things worse when he told him that he thought a Pez collection was something only a child would want to have. To prove his hobby was legitimate, the guy pointed out that a majority of the dispensers he had were decades old and were in great condition. He also said that he was selling all of these because he had doubles of them in his real collection at home. When Corey asked the guy what he wanted for them, he requested $2,500. Corey refused it right away and dropped the price to 1000 Insulted by their lack of knowledge on the worth of Pez and Chum Lee's rude comments, the guy packed up his collection and stormed out of the shop. He then said to the cameras that the guys in the shop were coochies, and that their $1,000 buying price was an insult to the entire Pez community. Okay man, whatever you say. Here's a clip. Seems like this is something the kids would be into collecting, man. Busts my balls all day long. You guys offered me a thousand dollars for that them fifty pieces of Pez. That's an insult to the Pez community. I can't believe it. That's why they're choo -choo. Number four. In an attempt to get rid of his flamethrower at the request of his girlfriend, this guy came into the shop hoping to sell it for a decent amount. This particular flamethrower used to belong to Elon Musk, which made it quite valuable. Chum Lee was obsessed with it from the second he saw it and was determined to have it whether it was resellable or not. He ended up paying a total of $1,400 for it, and all he wanted to do with it was play with it. For a good long while, he ran around the back rooms of Gold and Silver, pretending to shoot flames everywhere like he was an action movie star. That was until Rick stumbled upon him. When Rick found out why he bought the flamethrower and how much he paid for it, he was unbelievably angry and demanded that Chum Lee would find an expert to determine if the weapon was worth anything. In an attempt to win Rick over and have some fun, he brought the flamethrower to a large warehouse to test it out and have a bit of a cookout. Out. Their expert ended up pricing the item with the box at $1,200, only if it worked. Turns out it was functional, and Rick was determined to have Chum Lee buy it from him for the full $1,400 that he paid for it. In the end, Rick and the expert left before eating any of the food Chumley had prepared, and being that he wasted money on an item that was simply for his own personal enjoyment, he kind of deserved to be treated like this. Here's a clip. First, where did it come from? I bought it, it came in the shop. How much did you pay for it? 1400 What's it worth? <laughs> Who knows? Who cares? It's dope. I would say that these tend to go if they've been used for anywhere from without the box from like $800 to like one like this is like $1,200. Number three. Bob Dylan is an incredibly famous singer and musician, but recently bought vinyls of his albums are not very worthwhile in the pawning world. This guy brought in a copy of Bob Dylan's self-portrait on vinyl in hopes of getting $150 for it. Rick very quickly talked him down to $50, claiming he was going to sell the thing for $75 at most. 
After they finalized the deal, and after the guy had left, Rick handed the album to Chum Lee, telling him that Bob Dylan was in town for a show, and that he should go walk the Vegas Strip in search of him. Although Chum Lee's search was pretty lengthy, eventually he found him walking down the street. He managed to get his signature on the album, which greatly increased its price when it was put up for sale. But there was one problem with it. Chum Lee had Bob Dylan write it out to him, so he wrote to Chum Lee on it. When he brought it back to the shop, Rick looked at the signature with nothing but disappointment. Being that it was made out to Chum Lee, it essentially had no worth anymore. After having made such a terrible decision, Rick gave up and let him keep the album. There was no point in keeping it around the shop, because no one would want it, so Chum Lee just took it home with him. All Chum Lee had to do was get a simple signature, and he still, somehow, managed to mess that up. Here's a clip. Bob Dylan's in town for a concert. I want you to bring this album to him and have him sign it. All right, there he is. Hey, Mr. Dylan. Huh. How you doing? Okay. I was wondering if I could uh, trouble you for a signature here. A signature? That's my name, Two Chumley, Bob Dylan. I just wanted Bob Dylan to sign it, just Bob Dylan. No one's gonna wanna buy an album off me. Signed, Two Chumley. Number two. When pawning an item, you should always attempt to keep the price you're handing over for it low enough so that you can make some profit, but also high enough that your customer walks out happy. This woman brought in a 1958 Peanuts book, hoping she could make a couple thousand dollars off of it. But thanks to Chum Lee, she was terribly underpaid for the item. After Chum Lee skimmed the pages, he called in a book expert to determine its true worth. The woman's initial asking price for the item was $5,000, but the expert deemed it worth about $3,200 to $3,500 at the most. The expert also said that an item like this would sell incredibly quickly due to high demand, which would most likely increase the price over the estimated worth she gave it. Once Chum Lee and the lady started haggling again, they decided on a price of $1,400. Now, this price was fantastic for the shop, but you could tell that the owner of the book was not at all a happy camper. That book most likely netted gold and silver a ton of money, which that woman missed out on. Here's a clip. I have a Snoopy book from 1958. The new penis book featuring Snoopy by Charles Schultz. And a hand-drawn picture by Charles Schultz. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, 14 is gonna be where I, it's just where I'm comfortable at. So if you want to take 14, I can do it for you. All right, we'll take 14. All right, it's a deal. All right, thank you. Number one. Chum Lee has been making bad pawns since he started at the shop, and his most popular strategy for purchasing items is to buy them with no real knowledge of how much they're actually worth. When this guy brought in a vintage Gibson mandolin, Chum Lee thought he stumbled upon the jackpot. He paid the guy a total of $1,500 for the instrument, and said that he bet that he would get a raise for bringing in such a great find. To verify the item, he brought it in to a guitar expert to find out its true worth. Sadly though, it was far less profitable than he would have anticipated. First of all, the mandolin was clearly a fake, as the decals on it were completely wrong and were not even in the right style. Also, the finish on the mandolin happened to be made of plastic instead of the normal finish used by Gibson for stringed instruments. Oh, and to top it all off, the pickguard used on the mandolin was one that Gibson had never used before. Before. With all of this considered, the fake mandolin's estimated price was a total of $100. This is easily one of the worst and most uneducated purchases Chum Lee has ever made on the show. Here's a clip. There's a couple things here. The decal, you can see where it was cut out with some scissors. On this mandolin, it would have been inlaid or silk screened. It wouldn't even have been a decal. And the finish. It's like plastic. Gibsons are covered in a lacquer finish. And this pick guard is totally wrong. This is something Gibson never even used. Yeah. This is fake as hell, man. This is... I just paid $1,500 for that. Ouch.